Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today I'm going to show you how to UV map a character. This tutorial is meant for people to have some sort of knowledge on UV mapping. The first thing I do is assign a Lambert to it, and then I uh, label it. And the next thing I'm going to do is click on the output, click on File, and then find the checker textured. As you can see, there's a lot of work to do. The next thing I want to do is just isolate the geometry. So I click the button at the top and uh, isolate the geometry. Next is selecting faces. Uh, the arm is considered a cylinder, so the first thing we're going to do is actually select the faces that create the arm, and then we're going to go to cylindrical mapping. Now, the thing about cylindrical mapping is that it's very handy for uh, arms, but you have to rotate it just like I'm doing right now, rotate it and uh, shape it so that it actually revolves, the, the projection revolves around the arm. And what I'm doing is scaling it so that the grid is actually the size of a square. You want to make sure that the grid looks like squares because it's an example of how the textures are going to fall onto it. The next thing I do is open up the UV texture editor and as you can see I'm still slowly trying to rotate it to make sure that my UVs look like squares or in this case it's going to be a rectangle on my UV editor. This is also going to help me to texture. The last thing I want is to have UVs all over the place. I'm going to try to contain it so that the seam isn't only in one area and then I get to texture it easier. Next, I'm going to select the edges that are flow, you know, on the side. I need to cut it, select the edges that are supposed to be attached to, and then move and sew. And now I have a nice clean UV set for the arm. The next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to select the hand. I'm going to do a planar mapping this time. And the whole hand has actually been planar mapped because what I'm going to do is show you a little trick. I'm going to actually select the edges of the hand where I want the seam to be. So I double click as much as I can to select uh, the edges all the way around the hand. But sometimes you actually have to go in and click on the specific edges where you want the UVs to fall on. Now this is going to take a little bit of time just because I want to make sure I've got the right edge. I don't want to have my seam in the middle of the hand or in the middle of the finger. I'm going to go ahead and start placing it a little bit lower in the hand uh, so it does, it's not so noticeable. Again, I'm just double clicking and moving around trying to find where the best um, seam or the best place to place a seam is going to be. I'm deselecting edges because I didn't like that and I continued it at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and click cut, select my UVs, and notice that when I went to select a shell, it selected everything. So then I noticed that I was missing one edge, that's all that it takes. I cut that again, and then you have two handprints. I flip one of them to because it was red, I flip it, I unfold it, and I do that for both. And now I'm going to attach the hands together. Now it's up to you where you want it. Do you want it to seem to be on the pinky or the thumb? Well, and I decided to go ahead and attach it to the pinky and deselect the edges that I don't need. Make sure nothing's selected and then attach. Okay, so I still do a little bit of unfolding, and then I also want to make sure that there is no overlapping UVs. So I'm going into the thumb area where there can be always a little bit of work, and just kind of move around the, the UVs to make sure that everything is, you know, everything fits. So when I create textures, it doesn't mess anything up. I also try to select the little section of UVs and try to unfold, and, uh, and just slowly but truly get the UVs to fit together. Uh, nicely so that I can produce some nice textures. Now, as you notice, this video is a little bit fast. Um, I decided to go ahead and just record myself doing the UVs. And uh, it's, a, it's a long process, and I thought it would be very boring for you to watch me uh, do it in regular speed. So this is actually uh, accelerated by 50%. So imagine this just twice as slow. So I think, uh, I think this it gives you an idea. All right, so then I grab the arm and I start to unfold and continue to unfold until it is uh, looking good. 
And finally, I'm going to show you how to attach the hand to the arm. The less seams, the better. So I decided to go ahead and attach the arm, the arm to the hand. So this time what I'm going to do is um, deselect anything that's uh, not right, select the edges, and then move and sew. And there you go. It really helps if you know exactly what the seams are, so when you attach it, everything looks good. All right, so then I saved, and now the next part is going to be the legs. Now, the leg is just like the arm. It is considered a cylinder, so we're going to go ahead and make the selections of the necessary geometry. Now, the question is how far up the leg you want. Um, I'm going to go all the way up to her thighs and almost all the way to her lower back. Again, this is a great way to start, and if there's any changes that we need to do, we go ahead and make them. I'm also deciding to, uh, of course, grab the crotch area because that, that would help. Make sure you're not selecting any parts of the feet, and then we're going to do a cylindrical map. So again, you want to close the cylindrical map, take a look at it in texture mode, and see where you can make any changes. I always scale. Again, I want to make sure the grid is on the same, is working well. And I'm also rotating so the seam is uh, inside the thigh. Then I'm going to do some rotations to see if there's anywhere I can make it pretty rectangle. I actually did a pretty good job right off the bat. I'm going to start unwrapping. I can select the whole thing and start unfolding. But as you can see, the knee is having some interesting issues. So I'm going to try to fix the knee next. Now this is supposed to be like uh, armor for her knee. So I'm selecting the geometry that's needed so that I can UV map this specifically. Now, as you can tell, what type of, you can imagine, we only have several options when it comes to UV mapping. So I'm using planar mapping to create this because it looks pretty flat. So I'm going to use this as a, uh, as a way to create planar mapping. I noticed that I missed some faces, so I went ahead and uh, clicked on those and did a planar mapping again. Still, still missed some faces. I'm going to go ahead and start looking for them, selecting them, making sure that they're part of the UVs that I'm creating. Again, planar map. And that looks a lot better. Now I'm going to leave it like that because you're really not going to see the textures behind the knee, the knee pad. You're not really going to see it, so it's okay to overlap. And that's the master plan here is that I'm going to overlap the knee with the texture. Now, as you can see, there's still some flying faces around, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and cut and sew. I'm unfolding the certain area to make sure everything looks nice and smooth. I can also see that there's a couple of areas that need to be sewn together. So it's important to take a look at your UVs and there's no floating faces or floating UVs. You want to make sure everything's connected. And next is going to be the foot. So the way I selected the geometry was to deselect it, deselect the leg using the UVs and, uh, and select the faces of the feet. I'm going to planar map it from the above. And now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the hand, which is to actually select the edges around. Cut it, move it, and you can see that it didn't work. So I'm missing an edge. So I'm going to try again. There's some there's an obviously an edge that I'm not selecting that's not going all the way around, so I'm looking at it to see where where is it. And I think I found it. There it is. So now I have two uh, UVs. I'm going to um, unfold it, select the bottom, flip the UVs, and then unfold. And now since I really try to avoid seam as much as possible, I'm going to go ahead and sew, move and sew the edge of the shoe. Again, just a little bit more unfolding to make sure everything blends together, and I'm happy with that result. I'm going to move it close to the leg so I don't get lost. And that is how you UV very quickly a leg and an arm. Well, I hope that was helpful. The next part is going to be the torso and the face. So keep an eye out for that. And I will see you next time.